স্যার আমরা এখন লাইভে আছি আপনারা শুরু করতে পারেন গুড মর্নিং রেসপেক্টেড টিচার্স সিনিয়র এন্ড ডিয়ার স্টুডেন্টস वेलकम यू ऑल टू द क्लिनिकल क्लास ऑन एमडी कार्डियोलॉजी टुडे वी हैव टू पेशेंट्स एंड अ वेरी एक्सपर्ट panel of exam uh, panel of expert and moderator and to moderate the session we have uh, with us uh, dr dhiman boning associate professor national heart foundation hospital and research institute and dr taufik shariar hawk who is also associate professor of national heart foundation hospital and research institute dr taufik shariar will join us virtually and we have with us dr dhiman boning and our examiner out uh, invited examiner of panel is professor choudhry mishka tamit from bs mmu good morning sir and very welcome to our uh, this uh, clinical class so without further ado i think we should move on to the class and i would like to request dr dhiman bonik to moderate the session good morning all uh, uh, good morning mr sir uh, sir uh, uh, we have given a patient to a student uh, dr asif and uh, he will be he is taking the history and uh, we are now uh, going on the uh, history taking of the uh, patient uh, dr asif is this the completed and he is taking uh, two minutes time you have two minutes time can you, you have before you have 10 minutes also 10 to 15 minutes sir uh mr sir sir when he is uh, briefing the history will i will he give a, a, a student for examining sir dhiman i couldn't follow you sir amra bolte jacchi je o jokhon history ta present korbe er moddhe ki amra arekjon ke examination er jonno dibo sir naki ha 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 arekjon korte pare examination ji sir ha koru karikjon examination আরো সামনে চলুন গাজীপুর dizziness for the last one and a half month the patient stated that um, the patient stated uh, the patient stated that he was uh, reasonably well reasonably well one year back then um, he first he first developed low to intermittent great fever which uh, appeared in last december uh, december uh, last last year december which was uh, in a low to intermittent great was associated with chills and rigors and that fever persisted for almost 5 to 6 months and he uh, went to several physicians for uh, this fever 
and he was treated uh, by different medications but the fever was not subsided and that fever uh, that fever uh, that fever persisted uh, uh, all through the day but uh, changes uh, changes severity uh, during time by time and sometimes it relieved by taking paracetamol or sometimes uh, spontaneously but along with the fever he also complained of a significant amount of weight loss that was almost 10 kg in the uh, in that 6 months and and that 6 months uh, finally uh, finally 6 months later uh, he he got relieved from the fever with some uh, extensive medications from different physicians and he was advised with some specific drugs Recently, uh, he came to us with a complaint of shortness of breath, which he first noticed uh, one month ago. One month ago, the shortness shortness of breath was associated with moderate to severe exertion initially, and uh, initially, but it was progressive. And later on, especially for the last seven to ten days, he felt shortness of breath on mild mild exertion. And on query, he also gives history of. Uh, shortness of breath or breathless uh, during sleeping time and for which uh, compelled him to awake from the sleep and um, and standing position or he used to walk to get relief from that um, and besides that the shortness of breath was not associated with any aggravating factor like dust fume or any allergen there was no seasonal or diurnal variation and that was not associated with any wheeze but he noticed uh, sometimes he noticed uh, some form of cough uh, some form of cough but there was no associated uh, being frothy or in his sputum he also complains uh, he also but that shortness of breath was not associated with any chest pain or any other uh, significant abnormality he also complains of uh, dizziness or he sometimes he felt uh, dizzy during movement or during uh, changing his posture but he gives no history of a brief loss of consciousness and that dizziness was not associated with any premonitory symptoms like nausea vomiting and on query he gives uh, he gives some history of fatigability and leg cramp during walking uh, when he went for the detailed history he also gave the history of a sudden sudden deterioration a sudden loss of his speech 6 months ago uh, during the recovery period of uh, time in his fever and that uh, that imp impairment of the speech will persist for almost one month and for that reason he went to um, several physicians but several physicians and he took some treatment but he denies any complaint like weakness in any side of the body and he denies any history regarding uh, any swelling of the dependent part of the body Um, uh, in, in past history, uh, he denies. He doesn't give any history regarding any uh, in his childhood regarding uh, joint pain, fever, or any any history consistent with um, chronic rheumatic fever. And uh, now, now he came to the hospital with the uh, latest complaints, but and with latest complaints, and he he is immunized as per the EPA schedule. Uh, none of his family members are suffering any form of premature heart disease or any valvular heart disease but one of his brother is suffered from bronchial asthma okay asif uh, what the big uh, wh why this patient is admitted this time so especially shortness of breath and dizziness this time shortness of breath with dizziness dizziness yes. at present he does he have any shortness of breath no sir because he is under treatment he is under treatment uh, he gave no history of uh, joint swelling no, sir. No joint swelling. In How will you explain uh, the desserts here? You have mentioned the desserts here six months back. Uh, sir, as he gives a history of prolonged fever for last six months, so in that case, sir, it may be a consequence of that fever, like any any thrombolytic manifestation or a stroke. May I explain yeah, that? Long term fever may produce desserts here? No, sir. But if uh, I consider it as infective endocarditis, that may result in thrombolytic manifestation like this. What, uh, this is a young patient of about uh, 25 years? Yes, sir. 25 years young patient with a disease here. Uh, I, uh, what lesion you expect in this patient? A patient of a young patient? Uh, yes, sir. 
living a history of disaster and uh, and he has no shortness of breath what cardiac lesion do you expect in this patient sir it should be a case of valvular heart disease what valvular heart disease bsd the mitral valvular heart disease mr can be mitral stenosis or yes mitral stenosis is your first most common thing in your mind yes. which came because in case of mr the uh, thrombombolic manifestation is rare it might occur in medicine anything may occur yes. but in mr there is a very rare thrombombolic manifestation but you should suspect a patient that he has ms mitral stenosis Sir, any, 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 any comments, sir? <clears throat> yes. Uh, did you say anything about hemoptysis? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, he he doesn't have any history of hemoptysis. Or... Uh, did you say anything about loss of appetite? Uh, no, sir. Uh, he doesn't complain loss of appetite, but he complained of significant weight loss, almost ten kg, sir, in that fever period, sir. did you say anything uh, about his contact with a tubercular patient or his socioeconomic structure which could suggest that he is vulnerable to have some tuberculosis uh, no sir i missed that history sir Sorry. did you say mention anything about his visit to an area which is endemic for kalajar or malaria so he is hailing from he hailed from gadipur sir but he, he could he could travel to to an area where there is malaria or kalajar is endemic no it's a no travel history sir uh, did you mention all this thing in uh, when 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 you are giving a history of prolonged fever back in the mind you should also have the possibility of other chronic disease this patient maybe he is a case of congenital heart disease or valvular heart disease or any other disease but at the same time he can also have fever for different reason so all these thing should be covered when you are giving the history of people uh, you mention about arthralgia and other things and but you did not mention anything about the uh, although it is more common in female to have the collagen vascular disease but collagen vascular disease also is also a differential diagnosis for colon people so you have to keep in your mind all the differential diagnosis because for last one year his chief complaint being the prolonged fever uh, and now he is complaining of shortness of breath and some dizziness so we expected a prolonged uh, elaborate history which could uh, focus on the differential diagnosis for prolonged fever as if clear is it clear yes sir thank you sir uh, and now, now can you tell, tell us what is what is your differential diagnosis about the this prolonged fever sir when i from the, from the history it seems that that was an episode of infective endocarditis as it persists for last uh, almost 6 months sir and now he why infective endocarditis should be should because, be because sir your uh, first differential times because sir, in his in his history he mentioned that uh, he is taking some drug that correlates with uh, valvular heart disease he is taking some um, uh, diuretics Uh, sir, anti prophylactic antibiotic. That's why I was thinking. Uh, along with that, uh, he gave a, uh, he gave a history of thrombomolic manifestation like dysarthria. You have not cleared about the thrombomolic manifestation. It is r- relatively rare to have alone the speech disorder. Uh, generally, if the patient has got some uh, cerebral thrombosis due to emboli. generally it is massive one and have have got other focal neurological sign it is rather uncommon to have we we get all this uh, small focal sign like isolated dysarthria and an, another thing in lacunar in fact which is rather thrombotic manifestation rather than the embolic manifestation so you have to have in your mind have in your mind that what could be the uh, true nature of the cerebral or cerebral event alone dysarthria could be even without any cerebral involvement so uh, you should also be able to elaborate the dysarthria whether it was aphasia whether it was dysphagia and 
whether at the same time he had any sort of weakness in the uh, right side of the body and other things. I mentioned that. Sir. No, uh, you mentioned that. Uh, whether uh, he had dysphagia at that time, because med um, lateral medullary syndrome, you have got also this dysarthria and dysphagia. So when the patient is complaining uh, only about the dysphagia or dysarthria, then uh, you also again have to have some differential diagnosis other than the embolism itself. So, uh, and at the times uh, we prescribe diabetes when the patient come with the history of shortness of breath injudiciously. So allow the history of diabetics should not, uh, should not lead you to a, to a diagnosis of infective endocarditis in first instance in this patient uh, when you're only taking the history. Because there are many conditions in which you can also have shortness of breath. For example, chronic fever may lead to anemia. That can be the cause of shortness of breath, for example. Uh, for example, in tubercular patient, there can be constrictive pericarditis that can also lead to shortness of breath. There can be many things that, that occur. So uh, uh, your uh, thinking process should be widespread. I, I'd rather put tuberculosis at the first diagnosis when we, when we are taking the history because it is rather commoner, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, nature of fever is again nature of fever is again important when he suffered from the fever with whether the fever was intermittent during during his suffering period whether it was high grade whether it, there was drenching uh, sweating uh, whether there was uh, whether the, he incidentally have found any sort of swelling in the abdomen or anywhere in the body whether he has some rashes in the skin whether had he had any oral ulcer uh, the history should be detailed. We expect the MD student in third part to be also competent in taking history as regards the internal medicine, not to forget about the internal medicine that you have come through, come across. You got my point? Yes, sir. I see? Yes, sir. When, when you have a, have a patient with history of prolonged fever, back in your, in your mind, there should be that you are also dealing with a case. Uh, that you have passed through the second part of your MD examination uh, alone. When 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 you are facing uh, the long case alone, we expect that that your history should be very very elaborate, and you you shouldn't miss any point. Okay, uh, as regard dizziness, uh, whether it was a disease spell or uh, it was just dizziness, it seemed to be dizziness, just dizziness, sir, because. He noticed that during changing posture, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Topic, Dr. Topic. Sir, I, uh, Mr. Sir has uh, uh, discussed everything so elaborately. Uh, I think uh, I don't have anything more to say, add. Okay, sir. We, 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 can you move, sir, sir, to the next uh, to the next uh, student? Uh, yes. Present. Okay. Okay. Okay, Dr. Faisal. Will uh, what is your clinical findings of this patient? Assalamualaikum, sir. I'm Dr. Wasak Faisal, MD, PhD for the student. Uh, on precordial examination of this patient, uh, reveals on inspection, uh, there is a visible impulse in the Epical area and uh, uh, no other uh, chest deformity, skin change, or any scar mark. On palpation, uh, apex bit is uh, displaced downward and laterally, and there is a systolic thrill in the epical area. There is a, a left parasternal hip and palpable P2 in the left second intercostal space. Uh, on auscultation, uh, the apex bit uh, is uh, on auscultation. Uh, the first heart sound is soft, uh, pulmonary soft in all area. Pulmonary component of the second heart sound is loud in the uh, left second intercostal space. Uh, there is a pansystolic murmur, which is heard 
all over the area, but waste heart in the apical area, which is uh, blowing in nature and four by six in grading, and uh, uh, which radiates into the uh, left axilla, and uh, lung base is clear. Clinical findings, what is your diagnosis? So my provisional diagnosis is uh, mitral regurgitation with uh, pulmonary hypertension. Differential diagnosis. Uh, differential diagnosis. So I have uh, uh, two differential diagnoses. One is pulmonary hypertension with tricuspid regurgitation. Another one is uh, ventricular septal defect with pulmonary hypertension. Then what is the positive point in, the, in your favor of mitral regurgitation? So, uh, apex is, is uh, displaced downward and laterally. Then there is a systolic thrill in the apical area. There is a pan-systolic murmur all about the picot but best her in the apical area and which radiates into the axilla. So how will you differentiate it from tricuspid regurgitation? Uh, so in tricuspid regurgitation, uh, the murmur should best her in the uh, left uh, pastoral region and there will be no radiation to the axilla. To the axilla. And uh, uh, does tricuspid regurgitation has any threat? Did you find any thrill in tricuspid regurgitation? Uh, Can you find any thrill in tricuspid regurgitation? So, uh, we will not find any thrill in the apical area in tricuspid regurgitation. Uh, and from VHD? So, in VHD, first heart sound will not be soft. And uh, the murmur will be based hard in the uh, left rational region. And there will be no uh, radiation in the, it may be radiated to the right uh, rational region or in the base but not radiate to the axilla. Uh, you have uh, in palpation you have mentioned that uh, there apex in, in inspection the apex bit is visible is, is it diffuse or it is localized so it is diffuse then uh, diffuse apex diffuse uh, palpatory apex bit uh, what is your differential so uh, uh, metal regurgitation then uh, aortic regurgitation, ventricular septal defect. Ventricular septal defect. In large ventricles. In large, in large, large ventricles. Any other? Aortic regurgitation, sir. In dilated cardiomyopathy? So it may be in dilated cardiomyopathy. Dilated cardiomyopathy or it's ischemic cardiomyopathy. Any form of cardiomyopathy. Sir, Sir Meska, Sir. Uh, will you please describe the palpation of the apex again for me? Uh, apex bit is uh, 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 apex, apex bit is displaced downward and laterally, which is forceful, uh, which is uh, forceful and uh, uh, is sustained and uh, uh, it is about six centimeter uh, it is in the in left six intercostal space uh, just medial to the uh, midline lateral to the midline and there is a systolic thrill in the apical area uh, did you measure the distance from the midline <coughs> Particularly in this patient, is the apex is this? Uh, no, sir. Uh, I forget okay. the major interview. Did you did you look for seventh space? Sorry, I looked for, but it's uh, I think sir, it's on sixth intercostal space. Just so it is diffused. Just lateral to the midline. Just no, sir. In, in the anterior axillary line or mid axillary line. So lateral to the. Uh, Anterior axillary line, sir. <coughs> Lateral to the anterior axillary line. You make it sure whether the where is the location because in case of mitral regurgitation, <coughs> probably we are dealing with at least moderate to severe mitral stenosis in this patient. Uh, 
uh, in that case, generally, when the patient has got volume overload condition, the apex is more displaced than we expect. Many cases, you will get an impulse in the sixth space, but there can be an impulse in the seventh space. So it is always wise to palpate the apex from back. Do you know how to palpate the apex from the back? So that you, you do not miss the uh, most lateral and most uh, lower most distinct pulsation. Uh, did you did you palpate the patient from the back? No, sir. Okay. Uh, you you mentioned about the character of the pulse as uh, it was forceful and insustained, right? And what, yes. you, what 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 did you mean? What did you mean by diffuse pulsation? So diffuse means it will not. Uh, I cannot localize the uh, apex bit. It will uh, felt over a large area in the picardium. It means the size of the apex has been enlarged, yes, but sir. you can feel it distinctly, isn't it? Yes. Sir. Because you, you have mentioned that it is forceful and ill sustained. Had this patient not a distinct impulse in the apex, you could not mention it as forceful and sustained. Diffuse mean actually when you really cannot locate where, where actually the apex is. And generally, it happens with a right ventricular hypertrophy. But uh, if you want to mention that the apex is, uh, apex is located in more than one space, then probably you should mention that the apex, um, the size of the apex is enlarged. You got my point? Yes, sir. Diffuse uh, apex falls into the category of character of the apex, not as the size of the apex. And many of many of the cases when when we when we deal with volume overload condition, then we get <clears throat> the apex is occupying in more than one space, and then we say the apex is, is generally enlarged. Okay. Yes. Um, what do you think? Uh, what is the severity of mitral regurgitation in this patient? If if the if you are dealing with a case of mitral regurgitation, uh, moderate to severe. Why? So, so I just examined the picodium. Uh, here, the apex bit is uh, uh, forceful and insistent. There is a systolic thrill, and uh, pressure sound is soft. And there is also uh, fissures of pulmonary hypertension, and uh, the murmur is uh, blowing, and uh, murmur gate is four by six. And it's the apex bit is displaced uh, downward and laterally. All these features coincide with uh, moderate to severe. Of all this feature, which is suggestive of severity of mitral regurgitation? Which features? You have mentioned about many features, but all the all, all of those do not suggest the severity. Particularly, which which features suggest the severity? So, uh, faster some soft. Uh, yes. Then apex is displaced downward laterally. Yes. And, uh, and there is a uh, there is pulmonary hypertension. Three sorts of pulmonary hypertension. Did you get the uh, uh, precordial lift? Similar, no, sir. similar to that of parasternal lift. Uh, no, sir. The whole precordium is bulging and coming forward. No, sir. Just there is a visible impulse. But there's no precordial lift, just this left pastoral uh, hip is formed. Okay. Uh, do you want to bring patent ductus arteriosus as your differential diagnosis? Sir, so, uh, uh, as the mama is only uh, occupied in the systole, uh, I, I will not add. But in Dr. Satyasas in his DD. Okay, I would not also mention this as differential diagnosis since the patient has got thrill. But had he not been any thrill with loud second heart sound alone, uh, I would I would bring PDA as differential diagnosis because in severe patent Dr. Satyasas with pulmonary hypertension, you may not be able to get the diastolic component of the murmur. Yes. Uh, so uh, you have done well. Uh, you have also uh, 
defended well, but uh, will you, you will you demonstrate me how to show how to look at the apex from the back, so that you do not miss miss the most lateral lateral impulse. I think it is a rare examination procedure. You all see this procedure. It is common mistake to miss the apex location of the apex. Bit. Many a time you say that it is in the sixth space, but it remains in the seventh space. It's common with severe mitral cell regurgitation and aortic regurgitation. You use your le left palm. Hmm. In, in the anterior axillary line, I think apex. You see, sir, was seventh, eh? sixth, sixth. Okay, sir, so, uh, you have you have found you have found any difference? No, no, sir, no, sir. Then you 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 auscultate the back as well. Auscultate the back as well. So the apex bit in the, the same position, but uh, I, I find the radiation in the back, just uh, lateral to the uh, scapular line. Okay, when when you get mitral regurgitation, uh, generally you mentioned that there is radiation in the axilla, right? Yes. <clears throat> but at a time, the murmur of mitral regurgitation can be heard from uh, vortex to the sacrum. And many a times, many, many a time it is common to find out in this marble in the back. It, it minimizes your differential diagnosis. You got the point. And also, uh, it, it helps you to you know, make you perfect about your examination that you have examined the back uh, and you have auscultated the back to look at the radiation. Because uh, few murmur, only few murmur that goes to the back. So always, when you have the mitral regurgitation and radiation in the axilla, you also look at the back for the radiation. Yes, sir. Okay. So I, I would just like to know if there is any role of uh, dynamic auscultation in this case. Sometimes examiners want to know. Yes, sir. If uh, we uh, could, if we want to find the cause of the mitral regurgitation, uh, there may be uh, mitral valve polyps. Uh, here uh, we can differentiate the uh, rheumatic origin or other causes from the um, mitral valve polyps by dynamic auscultation. Thank you. Uh, so in uh, in mitral valve polyps, uh, after standing or valsalva maneuver, uh, there will be decreased venous return. The LT volume will be decreased, and uh, the uh, the uh, mid systolic click of mitral valve polyps will uh, uh, will be nearer to the faster sound and the murmur will be prolonged. But in other case, the in uh, mitral regurgitation, uh, in after standing or valve salva maneuver, after uh, the LV volume decrease, the murmur will be uh, shortened. And opposite will happen after uh, uh, squatting position. Thank you, sir. I want you, to... you, you, you do not consider a hypertrophic cardiomyopathy as cause. Yes, sir. It, it, it may be wrong, but uh, 
in hepatopic cardiomyopathy there is well, also opposite effect will uh, occurs than the mitral okay. regurgitation okay then then you mentioned about both mitral valve prolapse and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy yes, yes. dynamic yes. consultation when examiner ask you about dynamic consultation back in their mind is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy yes. more hypertrophic cardiomyopathy than mitral valve prolapse but but what you have done well by is mentioning mitral valve prolapse Diman sir, mic to mona off hoye achhe. Sorry, uh, I I want to sir uh, uh, deal with the hemoptysis. Sir was telling Mr. Sir, the did you elaborate the hemoptysis? How will you elaborate the hemoptysis? Because this is an important issue in patient with like this in history. Sir, my patient didn't give any history. Uh, yes, if this patient has hemoptysis, what will you ask? Sir, in that case. Uh, uh, I will ask about the my amount of the blood, whether it is uh, mixed or it is um, bright red in color, then frequency. Can you have any in, any difference from the uh, color of the hemoptysis or the yes, sir. Uh, co uh, co uh, uh, or the appearance of hemoptysis? Yes, sir. Uh, it will be pink frothy uh, in case of uh, if it uh, results from uh, left ventricular failure, sir. That and for my. Uh, sir, in other causes, it may be uh, fresh blood or mixed with the sputum. Other causes. Fresh blood. What are the different? If it is pink and frothy, your patient is having uh, pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema, yes. Sir. Not left ventricular uh, failure. Pulmonary but it, because in case of MS, you can't say left ventricular sir, failure. Yes, sir. It oh, is pulmonary, pulmonary edema, due to pulmonary edema. And it is, if it is blood stained, then what are your differentials? Sir, sir there are uh, other DDs like it can be a case of consequence of any respiratory infection. Or theoretical uh, bronchial carcinoma, or any other lung pathology, sir. Can it be due to the lesion is uh, bulbular lesion? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, in, you you in should that... mention it first. Then you should mention it first. What bulbular lesion? Sir, uh, in, in case of in, in, in this patient, can it happen? With yes, last sir. Yes, sir. If How? The, if the bronchial vessels are ruptured, it may result in. Yes, you, you should place. mention it first. The bronchial rupture, dilatation, and rupture of the, the bronchial, bronchial vessel itself. Then it will pro produce uh, massive hemoptysis. Hemoptysis, frank with frank blood. Sir, uh, do you have any comments, sir, in this regard, sir? Yes, hemoptysis is, is an important um, symptom in part of cardiovascular examination. When you are taking the history, there are at least six causes for hemoptysis. And in single disease, you can have different causes for hemoptysis. For example, in mitral stenosis. Hemoptysis can be there due to acute pulmonary edema, as you have mentioned through this scheme. Acute pulmonary edema may develop in patients with mitral stenosis when they suddenly develop atrial fibrillation. And not uncommon. The patient with mitral stenosis may have uh, hemoptysis due to involvement of concomitant bronchitis because the upper respiratory tract infection is common with mitral stenosis. And then, as you have mentioned, then the blood will be stained with uh, sputum. The patient with mitral stenosis can also have Hemoptysis due to pulmonary hypertension, due to rupture of the pulmonary capillary. Patient with mitral stenosis can also have hemoptysis due to rupture of the pulmonary vein itself. And when there is massive pulmonary or moderate degree of uh, huge uh, hemoptysis in patient with mitral stenosis, we consider that this case could be moderate mitral stenosis. <clears throat> because in chronic severe mitral stenosis, <clears throat> the pulmonary vein become fibrous and thickened, so it does not rupture and does not give frank hemoptysis. So uh, you can also have atrial fibrillation and the pulmonary embolism, which can give rise to pulmonary uh, hemoptysis. So there are several mechanisms of uh, um, hemoptysis in patients with cardiovascular disease. And as, uh, as uh, uh, Dr. Dimon has rightly mentioned, the differential diagnosis from the lung cause is also important, as you have already mentioned. So always give emphasis on hemoptysis in patients with cardiovascular disease. And always try to find out there can be multiple causes in a single disease. That also should be there back in your mind. And another thing in this regard, that you should take a drug history also. In case of bulbular disease, whether the patient is taking warfarin. The warfarin may produce hemoptysis in such patients. In our, the warfarin may produce, because there is mitral stenosis with thrombus, then we prescribe for warfarin, then the patient may have mitral hemoptysis. So this could be 
Himapres is an important feature in a long case, and you should elaborate the history of Himapres. Then, we, sir, uh, the next, uh, we, we uh, it is sh sh short case and paper. I'm okay to discuss with you. Did you look at the neck? Yes, sir. Uh, though, sir, I was asked to examine only the picodium, but uh, um, uh, I just, I just. It is sure that neck is pulsation. Look at any, whether there is any pulse. Examination of the pulse and the epigastrium is part of examination of precordium. Yes. Don't forget sir, it. Yes. Don't yeah, you yes. ever forget it. The neck is, sir, in, is, <coughs> the neck is a part of examination of precordium, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Yes. First all, neck is a part of examination of the precordium. You must see the neck. And also the epigastrium. Yes, yes, sir. Also the biggest one. I want to stop you here. When you are uh, uh, palpating the carotid of the left side, you should do it by your left hand. You can't do it because in our, when uh, we are students, I want to mention it here. In, it, in the clinical book, it was written that you cannot obstruct the face of the patient. It is, uh, the senior teachers uh, will not allow it in short case or in long case. You cannot obstruct the face of the patient. It is a, it is a, it seems that you did not examine the patient for, uh, you cannot, of, you, you should palpate the, yes, with, with your, from the, the, this way. Uh, what you have found in the neck? Why, why, why examination of the neck was important in this patient? Sir, uh, now there may be uh, uh, raised uh, JVP number one. Uh, we can uh, we can found uh, 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 there may be radiation of the marmar also in the uh, neck. Uh, Particularly in, in this patient, uh, did you find anything, any pulsation in the neck? So I couldn't find any pulsation. Had there been any pulsation, which would, which which wave could be prominent in this patient? Had this there any pulsation in the neck, which wave? Could be prominent. Or uh, there may be CV or if if this uh, uh, when you have made uh, when you have made a differential diagnosis of mitral regurgitation with tricuspid regurgitation and ventricular septal defect, examination is of the neck become important. So uh, uh, if, because because in patient with tricuspid regurgitation you would have get a prominent V wave. Yeah. And with uh, mitral regurgitation and pulmonary hypertension due to pulmonary prominent airs. Okay. Prominent air wave. And had this patient a case of ventricular septal defect with VHD, then you would not have get any sort of wave in the in the neck. So these are the very finer things, uh, but you 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 will you will be smarter if you can mention this. By examining the neck, also you can make some different you can differentiate from other diseases. So never forget about examining the neck, especially the pulsation in the neck. Many a times you will get pulsation rather than not getting it. Because in normal person, the jugular venous uh, pressure is almost two centimeters of water. 
at the root of the neck, you, you will get some sort of pulsation in majority of the patient. So look at the pulsation and make a habit of looking at the pulsation of the neck and pulsation in the epic stream. Uh, although this is a little advanced, uh, we generally do not expect our student to uh, go uh, thoroughly on the neck examination. But uh, to my consideration, since you are going to be a cardiologist, bona fide cardiologist, you just cannot miss the examination of the neck. I was impressed with some presentation by Professor Atahar Ali uh, when he was presenting some cases on arrhythmia and he showed some video of neck. Uh, especially showing the differential diagnosis between SVT and VT and other thing. So examination of the of the neck is so important in cardiovascular system. Uh, don't don't you ever miss it. Shall we move on to the next case? It is a short case. Anyone? You, you auscultate the precordium.
okay what is your clinic finding what are the finding assalam alaikum i am dr nurul islam md final part student examine july 2020 2021 auscultation of of the precordium of my patient reveal auscultation of precordium of my patient reveals there is normally audible first and second heart sound a aortic component of the second heart sound is soft and there is a harsh ejection systolic murmur in the aortic in right second intercostal space that radiate to the both both side of the neck both side of the neck and and lung basis of are clear no other no other abnormal disease then what is your diagnosis my diagnosis is aortic stenosis do you have any differential for this patient yes i have only this hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy hocm then uh, how will you differentiate between hocm and uh, aortic stenosis in this patient in that case i need to do the dynamic auscultation and in case of standing and valsalva maneuver when there is a reduction in the venous return there will be, will be in case of aortic stenosis normal duration will be shorten but in case of hocm it will be prolonged and in case of lying and squatting it will be opposite when venous return is increased in case of hocm reverse reverse is this patient has a radiation to the neck yeah both side of the neck. both side of the neck the, then which one is uh, which do you think there is it is in hocm, HOCM is, uh, do you have any radiation to the neck usually yeah usually 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 not usually not you can find but usually it is not then uh, can you differentiate if it is aortic stenosis can you differentiate it or, or whether it is uh, valvular or it is supravalvular yes how for this patient there is second aortic component of the second heart sound is soft so this is valvular it is valvular in case of supravalvular type it is aortic heart, second heart sound will be normal audible no another important finding Sir, the sir, sir, will sir, sir, any comments, sir, in in this? Uh, will you please describe the murmur again? There is a harsh ejection systolic murmur. Murmur, uh, look, best heart, heart all over the pericardium, which is best heart at the left second inter, right second intercostal space, and murmur grading of the murmur is three by six. and is radiate to the both side of the neck and best heard on leaning forward breath hold after expiration did you find any murmur in the mitral area there is a murmur same murmur audible all over the pericardium is no other different murmur then did you get any murmur at the left sternal edge Yes. Yes, I look for the diastolic murmur in the left sternal. Systolic murmur. I am talking about the same systolic murmur. Whether it could be heard in the left sternal edge. Yes, it's almost same intensity all over the pericardium, but but best heard in the right second intercostal space. Did you mention that when you describe about the murmur? On first time description, I actually forgot, but later I. Is it important to mention that the murmur? Uh, of same intensity could intensity could be heard in the apex and in the left sternal edge as well as in the yes. right second intercostal space was it important yes it's important why
because the murmur of the aortic stenosis as the patient's age progresses, it tends to move towards the apex, you know. And many a times you don't get the murmur in the right intercostal space, rather you get it in the left sternum space and in the apex. When you have made, uh, when you have made a diagnosis, differential diagnosis of hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, then the murmur has to be in the left sternal age. Any murmur that confined in the right, uh, second right intercostal space cannot be differential diagnosis for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. You got my point? Yes. When you have mentioned that your differential diagnosis is, is HCM, then, uh, then you have to mention that actually the murmur was also present in the left sternal age, and that is why you are making the differential diagnosis. Because, because the murmur of the hypertrophic cardiomyopathy never come to the right second intercostal space. When you have only murmur in the right second intercostal space, your differential diagnosis will be different. When you have the murmur of aortic stenosis in the left sternal age, then your differential diagnosis is hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. This is the common mistake that we actually make. And when there is confined in the right second intercostal space, space it is more or less in an elderly patient with aortic stenosis. But in young patient, you have many differential diagnoses because in some uh, innocent murmur, uh, uh, can be there in the right second intercostal space and in the supraclavicular space. In some cases, patient with coarctation of the aorta, you can hear the murmur in the right second intercostal space and in the uh, in the supraclavicular space. In some patient with supravalvular supracrystal ventricular septal defect, even you can see hear the murmur in the neck and in the second intercostal space. So differential diagnosis will vary according to the patient's finding. You got my point. In particular, in this patient, we expect that his murmur will be widespread from the apex, uh, from the aortic area up to the apex. If you draw a line, everywhere you can hear the murmur. And particularly in this patient, you have heard this murmur in, in the similar fashion. So you describe the murmur as you have found it. You have found it, but you failed to mention it. You got my point? Yes. Is it clear? Sir, is in, informed you everything. Yes, Do you clear? Yes. You you summarize this thing for sir so, Yes, for all of us. In case of aortic stenosis, the murmur is usually heard all over the precordium, and with and sometimes even it's best heard in the apical area. In the, elderly uh, patient. In elderly patient. In elderly, please mention that in elderly patient. Generally, in young patient, it do, do not have that widespread uh, location. And if I find a murmur confined to the right second intercostal space only, then my DD will be only aortic stenosis in case of an older age patient. And if that murmur also heard in the left- No, you, you, in elderly patient, you have uh, sclerosis of the aortic valve as differential diagnosis. If second heart sound is normal or loud. Aortic sclerosis. Sclerosis, sclerosis of the aortic valve. Yes, in that case, you get the functional systolic murmur. Yes. Yeah. Whenever murmur is found in all over the precordium and also the left side of the sternum, then the hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy will come into the DD. And I need to differentiate this with the dynamic oscillation. One more thing about dynamic oscillation. In aortic stenosis also, you have, you, you have your marma change during uh, dynamic oscillation. Because the aortic uh, stenosis, the murmur is due to gradient between uh, uh, the ventricle and the aortic, uh, aortic pressure difference. When you uh, have the hand grip and other thing, you have got increased peripheral vascular resistance, which increases the pressure, both this, this systolic and diastolic. In that case, uh, the murmur attenuates. So when, when you mention dynamic auscultation as a maneuver to differentiate between HCM and aortic stenosis, you should also have your, in your mind that uh, there are some differences in murmur during dynamic auscultation in aortic stenosis as well. Jamon hypertrophic cardiomyopathy to change her aortic stenosis, so into dynamic auscultation could change it. Okay. Concept of clear hoy the polish of the Harajibun and general cardiologist have a jet of concept conception of the clear. Thank you, sir. Ami Ami to other shut on it to both the Saskia, and it's not necessarily to the examination in the face could have it. But uh, you are examining, uh, we want you to learn also. Tikna, Jenneraka Halo, Jenneraka Tapotomi to one of the prepared coro. Katan at the depth of the details, Samajina, the most thing Jonikub Halakursas, I'm impressed. 
মানে খুবই পাস করার জন্য যথেষ্ট সেগুলো অনেক ভালো নম্বর পাওয়ার জন্য যথেষ্ট কিন্তু আরো ভালো করবা যদি এগুলো সবকিছু ভালো বলতে পারো তখন হয় কি একটা জায়গা খারাপ করলেও উঠে আসা যায় জায়গা খুব ভালো করছে বোঝা যায় যে কোনো কারণে ওই জায়গাটা খারাপ হয়েছে কিন্তু আসলে জেনারেলি তুমি খুব ভালো আমরা জানো কিছু কিছু স্টুডেন্টদের আমরা আশি নম্বর দেয় এইটি মাস তোমাদের এখানে শামিমা আছে না রেজিস্টার ওর তো পরীক্ষা হ্যাঁ ভালো করলে আমরা খুব ভালো নম্বর দিতে চাই আমরা ফেল করাতেই চাই না কিন্তু যারা ভালো করে তাদের আমরা আশি পঁচাশি এরকম দিতে চাই হ্যাঁ ওয়ালকাম স্যার শামি স্যার ভালো আছেন স্যার হ্যাঁ হ্যাঁ ভালো স্যার একটা কোশ্চেন আসছে স্যার যে পারমানেন্ট স্ট্যাটাস এস টি আইটিক স্ট্যাটাস এর ডিফারেনশিয়াল হিসেবে আসবে কিনা স্যার ইয়াং پیشنটের জন্য তো অবশ্যই স্যার চ্যাট বক্স স্যার চ্যাট বক্স এ কোশ্চেনটা আসছে স্যার হুম এটা খুব ভালো কোশ্চেন ইট ডিপেন্ডস আপন দা লোকেশন অফ দি মারমার এই پیشنটের জন্য এল্ডারলি پیشنটে শান্ত পারমানেন্ট স্ট্যাটাস এস আমরা ডিফারেনশিয়াল ডায়াগনোসিস আনতে চাই না এক্সামিনার আনতে চাই না কিন্তু ইট ক্যান বি এ রিজনেবল ডিফারেনশিয়াল ডায়াগনোসিস ইন ইয়াং پیشنট ইয়াং پیشنটের জন্য তো অবশ্যই ডিফারেনশিয়াল ডায়াগনোসিস আসবে স্যার देयर ইজ অ্যানাদার কোশ্চেন फ्रॉम आवर স্টুডেন্টস স্যার uh sir uh, how can sir, in case of aortic regurgitation uh, a murmur cystic murmur is maybe also found in the aortic area sir mm -hmm. so how can we differentiate it from whether it is aortic stenosis or as a consequence of aortic regurgitation sir generally amra generally amra bolte se eta khub wise na je thrill thakle pore amra bole je concomitant aortic mani we differentiate between concomitant aortic stenosis and aortic regurgitation and aortic regurgitation alone tai to আয়োটিক রিগার্জিটেশন এর যে গ্রেডিয়েন্টটা তোমার যদি রিয়ারলি ফিল প্রোডিউস করে তাহলে দিস দিস রিগার্জিটেশন হ্যাজ টু বি সিভিয়ার ওয়ান তোমার অন্যান্য ফাইন্ডিং এ যদি আয়োটিক রিগার্জিটেশন সিভিয়ার না পাওয়া যায় তাহলে তুমি এক্সপ্লেইন করতে পারছো না ইন দ্যাট কেস ইওর ডিফারেনশিয়াল ডায়াগনোসিস শুড বি কনফাইন্ড অন আয়োটিক রিগার্জিটেশন এন্ড আয়োটিক স্টেনোসিস ইফ ইউ হ্যাভ গট আ সিভিয়ার আয়োটিক রিগার্জিটেশন অ্যাজ রিভিল বাই আদার ফাইন্ডিং উই ক্যান ক্লিনিক্যালি ফাইন্ড আউট দি we have clinical parameter for severity of aortic regurgitation severe aortic regurgitation and in that case you have if you have got a systolic murmur then you really cannot differentiate because uh, uh, almost the same similar feature even thrill can be uh, also perceived in severe aortic regurgitation generally speaking kintu academic interest ki ba porikha face korar jonno jodi patient thrill thake tahole that can be a differentiating point between Uh, aortic stenosis uh, and aortic regurgitation versus aortic regurgitation alone uh, did you get my answer yes sir the yes, finding that the finding that reflects severity of the aortic regurgitation particularly to answer this question will be very relevant in that case you mentioned about the severity of the aortic regurgitation and you mentioned that this patient do have severe aortic regurgitation and it is possible that he has got only aortic regurgitation and in very severe cases there can be also a thrill so apply the logic all the time but if you get a mild aortic regurgitation or mild to moderate aortic regurgitation and a systolic murmur with thrill then there has to be extra aortic stenosis along with aortic regurgitation thank you sir sir we move on to the uh, our uh, slide slide session next okay sir so shamim is uh, going to share the screen sir anyone <laughs> Sir, we have given two catheters, sir. Hey, this is something to make contribute. Cut the video. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Hello. Yeah. In left side, uh, there is a left Judkins uh, diagnostic catheter. and uh, in the right side uh, if you uh, sir yes 
It is a common question in the exam asked by this our teacher. By saying this, both both is a left-sided catheter. The left one is a diagnostic Judkins, yeah. and right one is an extra backup catheter, a guiding catheter. Yeah. And how will you differentiate this uh, from uh, two things? The, whether it is diagnostic or it is a guiding, it is commonly asked in the exam. In anyone, it, it is a one was the left Judkins diagnostic and other one is the extra backup guiding catheter. How will you differentiate this? Whether it is diagnostic or guiding? So, uh, in case of in case of diagnostic catheter. In case of diagnostic catheter, the distal end will be um, narrower than the uh, other portion. But, but in case of uh, guiding catheter, the uh, diameter is almost diameter is same, but not also the same. Okay. And uh, the, this is the one of the point because it is narrow. Is that yeah, the, yeah. the distal part is narrow in, the, in case of diagnostic, but it is almost equal. Yes. Another uh, thing is the soft Yes, it is important. There is a sub portion in the guiding catheter because you can pass anything uh, through this wire, balloon, even a rota wire, even eye bus, anything. So it is a sub, there is a sub tip in the guiding catheter. Other thing? Other thing you should mention first. This is the first. This hub, distal hub. Distal hub is stout, more stout. Distal hub of the, you see, Distal up of the guiding catheter is more stout, uh, and the distal up of the diagnostic catheter is more less stouter than the. It is important, and the uh, lumen from beginning to the end in a guiding catheter is equal, but in case of diagnostic catheter, you can pull the catheter. The distal part is narrow, narrower than the proximal part, and the uh, if there is a softer part for more accumulation of the device and wires and things, okay. Uh, by extra backup, what do we do? So, uh, in, in PTCA, we guide different Who, which side PTCA? Left side, left side. In, you can use it in the left side, in the most commonly in the left side. Anomalous uh, origin that you know, it is for a vessel. Anomalous origin that you know, RCA, anomalous origin by an RCA anomalous by in case of uh, uh, radial, in case of radial anomalous, you cannot hook the left side with a tiger, then you can go with an extra backup catheter. You should mention it in case of uh, if in radial, if you cannot hook the left side with an tiger, then the Guide, guide catheter is the guiding extra backup. Sir, any comments, sir? Tofik? Tofik, I'm a Interventionist. I'm a I'm a I'm a interventionist. 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 I'm a I'm a I'm no, sir. Taholiki, is this is a differentiating point? When you have a Janajan, I'm going to finish the Janajan, the Manama the Utu Divinish. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What we can see in the naked eye. The arm, there are difference in arm. Then I'm going to distantly, they took the tarmas, actum distantly. She taking to guiding catheter nine. Tikna? Yes, sir. 
Is it a differentiating point? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It is a differentiating point because in extra backup there is no arm. Acha. No arm money? No, sir, there is a there is a, sir only one you you shape a turn and it it, it uh, 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 extra backup maybe extra backup maybe three or three point five according the size of the arm. Kind arm arm as well. Kind extra. Kind that too arm nae. Kind extra arm as well. No arm. Acha. आंटी <laughs> क्षेत्र এটা খুব একটু অ্যাডভান্স क्वेश्चन কিন্তু তোমরা জানো যে ইন্ডিয়াতে ওরা যে ডিএম ডিগ্রি দেয় ওখানে কিন্তু কিছু ওদের ক্যান্ডিডেটরা দুইটা তিনটা অন্তত অ্যাঞ্জিওপ্লাস্টি করে এবং তোমরা এত কেস দেখো এত বড় মানে এত বড় বড় ইন্টারভেনশনিস্ট তোমাদের ওখানে অল গ্রেট ইন্টারভেনশনিস্ট শুধু বাংলাদেশে না পুরো কন্টিনেন্টের গ্রেট ইন্টার কন্টিনেন্ট মানে গ্রেট ইনকেস ডিফিকাল্ট হয় সেই ক্ষেত্রে স্যার ইনকেস অফ ডিফিকাল্ট এনগেজমেন্ট এ দি پیشنট হ্যাজ লেফট পেইন ডিজিজ অস্টিয়াল লেফট পেইন Or uh, severe left main disease, then which category is preferable? So if you extra backup, no, it is Judkins. It is left Judkins uh, guiding category in case of osteal or in case of severe left main disease. And uh, with 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 poor perforation, mm -hmm. with the uh, the left sided catheter guiding catheter, if you do want to do a A PCI of a left main or severe left main disease, then you should have catheter. Uh, left Judkins is the one of the good choice, and with perforation port. That is, there are ports because if you hook the left side, then then the pressure will be damp. Then you will you will find no pressure in the uh, in your monitor, so it will be very difficult for you to do the PT scan. So if there is pores, then you can have the patient is left pain. There will be damping of the pressure. So if there is pores, then it will give the pressure for you. Sir, anything you want to add, sir? Uh, if you allow, I tell Dinesh Chola. It is Janan Chola. I am going to Janan Chola. Jigesh, please say. Bala Chola. No, it is. I am going to say it is. It is rather easier to engage Jutkin rather than the extra backup. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. For, yes, for sir. Like Yes, sir. But it, it it is more easier, more easier. धोरा एक प्रथम तुमरा PCI शुरू कर सकते हैं mid mid LA deletion somehow significant mid LA deletion ये patient अर्जन तुम्हारे मानी प्रथम प्रथम तो engage कर टाफले एक तो difficult तुम्हारे जो दी था इसे हर extra backup है relatively difficult जब हम करते करते हैं ना कि तो जो किस तरह से समझ सकते हैं कि तुम ही easily perform करते पार वाल की मानी खूब uncomplicated cases calcified ना bifurcation deletion ना सिंपल लेशन गुलाब जो ना जुटके इंस्टा बाहर करा देते पड़े कारण एक्स्ट्रा बैकअप पे चाहिए तो इंगेज करा रिलेटिवली शाहो जब हम इटा ते तुम्हारे डिसेक्शन का चांस होने पर नुतो निश्चय आई मीन शब्द में पसंद करी सिंपल लेशन था कि जुटके इंस्टा बाहर करते दीमाने कमेंट्स में तो चाहिए क्यों ভালো আর কি যেহেতু নিত নিশ্চয়ই তোমরা যখন শুরু করো তখন শুরু করতে পারো মানে সেফ রিলেটিভলি সেফ এই সমস্ত কাজ এক্সট্রা ব্যাকআপ ইজ মোর ইউজ নাও ইট ইজ হোয়েন পিপল আর ডুইং মোর রেডিয়াল ইন্টারভেনশন অ্যাকচুয়ালি ইয়েস দ্যাস টপিক দ্যাট ইন রেডিয়াল আই হ্যাভ মেনশন ইন রেডিয়াল ইন্টারভেনশন ফর ডুইং এন্ড পিসিআই অফ এ леফট সাইড ইন রেডিয়াল এক্সট্রা ব্যাকআপ ইজ মোর ইউজ Sir, we want to move to next okay, okay, okay. topic, sir. This is an ECG. Anyone? Arudhika, Arudhika, sir. Let's start with the first one. 
डीप एस इन बी वन एंड इन बी सिक्स एंड बी फाइव Uh, there is a short PR inter uh, interval in, uh, in on the all lead. <coughs> and uh, there is a uh, right axis, right axis, axis, right axis, right axis, right axis normal. Uh, so, so my diagnosis case of uh, left. Le Lab is there is left ventricular uh, hypertrophy. Left ventricular hypertrophy. You have mentioned uh, B1 and B6 is more than 35 years. You have mentioned PR interval is short. Where is it short? Is 14, minimum 14. Yes, sir. Other finding, mm -hmm. other important findings are there in this ECG. थ्रीएफ Yes, sir. You have missed the important finding. What is this? Yes, sir, uh, it's not the uh, old myocardial infarction with with ventricular hypertrophy. Old myocardial infarction where? Uh, sir, uh, inferiorly. Inferiorly. Uh, uh, other other finding in this ECG? Any other finding in this ECG? There is an important. Uh, there is P wave in V1. The P wave if there is a negative deflection, more negative deflection, then it is a finding of left atrial left atrial enlargement. enlargement. When you say there is LVH in this patient, what is the type of the LVH? You should mention. You have men you have missed everything almost. It volume, is a volume overload. Yes. Then many findings are there in this ECG. There is LBH with volume overload, inferior MI, left atrial enlargement. Mm -hmm. Sir, any comments, sir, in this question, sir, in this ECG, sir? Yes, actually, Jini, sir, at the bottom, when you always remember, you look at the age of the patient when you mentioning LBH. You mean this is the voltage criteria? They follow LBH, but the child, the patient, the B batch or B. It's very important. Sir has mentioned a, a very important a point. You said the voltage criteria mm -hmm. of the age difference, sir. I I want to ask the uh, student in in this regard, sir. Voltage sure. criteria. What about the voltage criteria? Shabar khatri ke ek. No, sir. Female, female. Uh, female hai. No. Gender onu jai, sir. Gender onu jai. Age. Age kothon niche. Forty or less. Aro aro to kam manai. Is thirty. In case of In two, in there is two uh, in two instances, LVH voltage criteria is forty. 
in case of age less than in some books it is 30 in some books it is 35 and in case of presence of lvv is there is presence of lvv voltage criteria is 40 sir any comment sir in this regard sir no abushe ha jodi age age 35 kiba kon kon 40 ase 40 niche hoy tahole voltage criteria kintu different তোমরা যে ভোল্টেজ ক্রাইটেরিয়া সেটা अप्लाई করার জন্য সেজন্য এইটা দেখা সব সময় ইম্পর্টেন্ট আর ভোল্টেজ ক্রাইটেরিয়া এলোন না তোমাদের কিন্তু মেনশন করা উচিত ছিল দেখো লিড 1 এসটি ডিপ্রেশনটা এসটি ডিপ্রেশন আছে তো ডাউন স্লোপিং এসটি ডিপ্রেশন দেখতে পাচ্ছ তো আমরা জানি যে হ্যাঁ আমরা আমরা জানি যে রাম হিল যে ক্রাইটেরিয়া সেখানে হলো ভোল্টেজ ক্রাইটেরিয়ার জন্য 3 পয়েন্ট এসটি ডিপ্রেশনের জন্য 3 পয়েন্ট লেফট অ্যাট্রিয়াল এনলার্জমেন্টের জন্য 3 পয়েন্ট অলরেডি কিন্তু লেফট অ্যাট্রিয়াল এনলার্জমেন্ট এবং এসটি ডিপ্রেশন যদি ভোল্টেজ ক্রাইটেরিয়া নাও থাকতো তাহলে কিন্তু এটা এলবিএস হতো মানে উইদাউট নোইং দা এস বলতে পারতো কিন্তু তুমি যেহেতু শুধু ভোল্টেজ ক্রাইটেরিয়া বলছো সেহেতু আমাদের প্রশ্ন জাগবে যে তুমি তুমি তো বয়স জানো না কেন ভোল্টেজ ক্রাইটেরিয়া বলতেছো বুঝতে পারছো জি স্যার জি স্যার তো আমি রামহিল ক্রাইটেরিয়াটাই অনেক ভালো রামহিল ক্রাইটেরিয়া কিন্তু স্যার খুব ইম্পর্টেন্ট বিকজ হচ্ছে রামহিল ক্রাইটেরিয়া কমনলি আসছে ইন দি एग्जामिनेशन আচ্ছা আর ইনফেরিয়র এমআই সম্পর্কে ধরো আমি একটু মানে ইন্টারঅ্যাক্ট করতে চাই এটা পরীক্ষার জন্য না জানা আছে নাকি এটা আমাদের শেষ না আর তো কিছু নাই স্যার এই ইয়ার স্যার এক্স রে আছে আচ্ছা সেটা হলো যে پیشنটে দেখো কখন আমরা কিউ কে প্যাথোলজিক্যাল বলি ক্যান ইউ ক্যান ইউ টেল আস ওয়েন উই মেনশন আ কিউ অ্যাজ কিউ প্যাথোলজিক্যাল কিউ নিশ্চয়ই তার একটা ক্রাইটেরিয়া আছে সেই ক্রাইটেরিয়াটা ফিট করে কিনা দেখো তো লজিক্যাল কিউ এর ক্রাইটেরিয়া বলো খুব ইম্পর্টেন্ট কোশ্চেন এটা বেসিক কোশ্চেন একদম যদি স্যার ওয়াইড সেট 3 মিমি এবং স্যার যদি স্যার হুম 3 মিমি এর বেশি স্যার যদি বেশি 3 ওয়াইড 2.5 না তো হইতেছে না তো এটা খুব বেসিক জিনিস দেখো খুব বেসিক জিনিস এটা কিন্তু আমরা অনেক সময় ঝামেলা হয় আমাদের এটা দেই একজন বলো দেই ফয়সাল বলো कमी <laughs> कत मुश्किल বর্ণ চড়া একটা এমআই তাই না সিম্পটমও অনেক সময় টিপিক্যাল থাকে না ইসিজি ফিচার টিপিক্যাল থাকে না আমরা রেডিও অ্যাকটিভ আয়োডিনে ফিচার পাই না ইটিটি তো ইকোতে তো পাই না এনফিডেমে মিস করি কো তো ইসিজি তেও তাই কিউ সব সময় যে টিপিক্যাল প্যাথোলজিক্যাল কিউ আসে তা না কিন্তু ইম্পর্টেন্ট হলো লিড 3 এবং লিড 3 এফ এভিএফ এ যে এসটি ডিপ্রেশন এবং কি ইনভারশন আছে এটা কিন্তু কিন্তু ইম্পর্টেন্ট এটা থেকে মনে হয় যে পেশেন্টের সাধারণত ইনফেরিয়র এমআই হওয়ার সম্ভাবনাটা বেশি কিন্তু এই پیشنটের কোন একটা ম্যানুভার করতে চাইতাম আমি বলো তো ইসিজি করার সময় কোশ্চেন বলো দি ইনফেরিয়র এমআই ইনফেরিয়র এমআই তে একটা ম্যানুভার করা লাগবে যে এমআই দিয়ে প্যাথোলজিক্যাল কিউ এফ হোয়াট ম্যানুভার ফিজিওলজিক্যাল কিউ এফ পার্থক্য করা যায় ফিজিওলজিক্যাল প্যাথোলজিক্যাল কিউ এফ পার্থক্য করা যায় স্যার ডিং ইনস্পিরেশনে ইনফেরিয়র এমআই তে স্যার কিউ এফ তে ডিসঅ্যাপিয়ার করবে হুম 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 কিমা হাইটটা কমে যাবে আমি একটু প্রেফার করতাম এই پیشنট কে একটা ইনস্পিরেশন করে তারপর লিটতে ইসে থাকতে পারে কি কিউ থাকতে পারে আর এই پیشنট এই پیشنটের বয়স তো জানি না আমরা ইয়াং پیشنট দের কিন্তু রিলেটিভলি কিউ ওয়েভটা প্রমিনেন্ট থাকে এল্ডারলি پیشنট দের চেয়ে ধর এই پیشنটের বয়স যদি 26 হয় তাহলে কিন্তু এই কিউ ওয়েভকে আমরা আমলে দিব না কিন্তু پیشنটের বয়স যদি 72 হয় তাহলে এই কিউ ওয়েভগুলো আবার ইম্পর্টেন্ট এটা মনে রাখা উচিত যে যেমন ধর ইয়াং پیشنট দের 
প্রিকর্ডিয়াল লিডে ফাইভ মিলিমিটার পর্যন্ত কিউ ওয়েভ থাকতে পারে কিন্তু এল্ডারলি একটা পেশেন্টের কোনোভাবেই টু মিলিমিটারের বেশি থাকা উচিত না এইজের সাথে যে কিউ ওয়েভটাও ডিফার করে এটাও মাথার মধ্যে রাখা ভালো বুঝতে পারছিস তোমাদের डिजेपियारा पढ़ाशुना <laughs> राइट पैनल Uh, they are showing uh, spectral doppler of the same uh, same view showing the pulmonary valve uh, pulmonary valve uh, uh, gradient is 69.3 mm it's a high gradient so the diagnosis is uh, pulmonary valvular stenosis severe pulmonary valvular stenosis डायलेटेड सर and the uh, and distally maybe due to post stenotic jet yes a uh, can you differentiate from this uh, uh, sir amik to sir ekta ekta mm-hmm. sir uh, between valvular and supravalvular uh, rbo t obstruction sir uh, supravalvular uh, if it is supravalvular stenosis then the uh, um, mosaic jet will not Uh, in, uh, interfere with the valve. Yes. It will be above the valve level. Yes. In M mode. In M modes. Uh, mode. What is the differ- how you differentiate in M mode between valvular and supravalvular stenosis, pulmonary stenosis? What is the shape of this stenosis stenotic lesion in the M mode? Pulmonary, sir. Yeah. What is the uh, in the uh, in the M mode? M mode. It is. What is the uh, shape in the M mode? What is the shape of the standard gradient? It is. There is a term dagger shape. Yes, sir. Dagger shape. If there is a dagger shape stenosis like this, then it is a valvular. Valvular. And, sir, in case of supravalvular, sir, do you have any comments, sir? Supravalvular, there is a carving of the. Uh, yeah. परीक्षार समय the dagger shape it in sir we want to com- uh, end sir today sir okay um yes. student anek bhalo korteche ar ki ar on my part uh, sir, uh, it, it, it my great pleasure karon 
শাহরিয়ার খুব ভালো একজন ইন্টারভেনশনিস্ট আমার খুব প্রিয় একজন মানুষ না স্যার মানে দেখতেও ভালো লাগে কাজ শুনতেও ভালো লাগে সবকিছু ভালো লাগে थैंक यू স্যার थैंक यू দিবান্ত মানি আমার মানি মানুষ হিসেবে অসাধারণ একজন মানুষ ইন্টারভেনশনিস্ট হিসেবে অসাধারণ আমার আমি তো ইন্টারভেনশনে আমার ইনভলভমেন্ট রিলেটিভলি কম যার জন্য ইন্টারভেনশনিস্ট তো যখন আমার সাথে একটু ইন্টারঅ্যাক্ট করে আমি খুব মানে আই ফিল প্রাউড অফ দ্যাট uh it's a it is get a great opportunity on my part to be with shahadiyar and with diman amra sir khub sir khushi sir apne sir aisha heart foundation student ta khubi bhalo korlo ajke dekhlam amader performance khub bhalo chilo sir eta sir apne serially amader sathe thakchen dekhe oder eta hocche bepar amader kono sandeho nai ei jonno apnake onek dhonnobad ebong apni ashtechen dekhe kintu amader chhatrorar protidin utsaho niye niye eshe present korte egi ashteche kauke ta rakhte hocche na स्टूडेंट our moderator and uh, dr smita dr shamim and dr ishraq dr kolim for coming here and making this program such successful sir thank you sir sir you have uh, i want to give a, uh, you please give your comment and end this session sir am to comment bollam i or the obviously khubi bhalo mane amar amar khub bhal lage thakte amar khub bhal lage odi sir i am shobshomoy the student der sathe thakte ekhon miss korteche sei samoy ta it's a great opportunity to me also थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सर सब शेष कर